Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That's the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today, I want to talk about what I think are the best fantasies if you are a beginner reader, or if you're a beginner reader of fantasies. I've been enjoying watching other people's beginner fantasy lists, but the books that are listed are not what I would consider evergreen. Evergreen would be a book that would appeal across demographics across generations of people. And I feel like some of those were really missing. So as I prepared this list, I made sure to include many books that I believe are evergreen. And that means if somebody has a middle schooler, your middle schooler would like this book. But if you're a 90 year old adult just beginning to get into fantasy, you would like these books as well. Now I have grouped them according to subgenres in fantasy, but Otherwise, they're not in any particular order. I like all these books equally well. To begin this video, I'm doing the subgenre fairy tale retellings, since I think that is a pretty easy gateway for a lot of people. Especially if you grew up in the United States and grew up watching Disney, you're very familiar with fairy tales. And to start that off, I have Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Reed. This follows Princess Cimarron, who is not your typical princess, and doesn't want to do the typical princess things and is sick of having that conversation with her parents. And so then when they try to arrange a marriage for her, she decides to take her own fate in her own hands. And she takes a talking frog's advice. So there are four books in this series, and this is the first one. Each book follows a different perspective, but you have the same characters. I really enjoy this series because it really does subvert the fairy tale expectations. And then in other ways, it really does play into it, but plays into it in a way that's really fun. So next on the list, I have Beauty by Robin McKinley. And this is obviously a Beauty and the Beast retelling. She has actually written two, but this one is my favorite. She does have a fantasy duology that I also enjoy, but I try to only stick to one book per author. And I feel like this one is more iconic from her. I've given this to many different people who have ended up loving it just as much as I have. There are three sisters, Grace, Hope, and Honor. And Honor didn't understand what her name meant as a child, and so she told her family she'd rather be called Beauty, hence the name Beauty. That became her nickname. I really like how the three sisters get along, and they I think they have a great relationship. And this is just a really good family story. I enjoyed it a lot and I hope you will as well. For this next one, I chose Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. She's also someone who does a lot with fairy tale retellings, and I read a lot of her as a teenager, but I really especially like this one because Ella is under a curse where she has to do whatever anyone commands her to do. It doesn't have to be a parent, just anyone who gives her a command, she has to do it. And it's interesting to see how she has circumvented things, how she still manages to have agency in her life, despite living underneath this curse. Please don't watch the film adaptation of this story. It's trash. But the book is wonderful, so please go read the book. So next I have The Fairy Godmother by Mercy Lackey. So this book has one sex scene towards the end of the book. So if you're gonna let your middle school child read this, I'd read it with them, so then you can skip that part. But otherwise, everything else in the story I think holds up to being evergreen. This is a twisting of the story of Cinderella. This is set in a world with the premise that there are people chosen by the fairy tales, but sometimes not everything lines up to make a story actually happen. And our main character, Ella, is one of those people. Everything in her life lined up to make her be the Cinderella, except the prince is a small child. So like many of the other characters I like in my fairy tale retellings, she decides to take matters into her own hand to change her fate and ends up learning how to become a god, a fairy godmother and what that actually means. This is the first in a series of books that I'll play with fairy tale tropes. My favorite is this one. I've read some of the other ones, but they began to become more formulaic and you don't actually need to read the rest of the series. You can enjoy this as a standalone. So the next one I have on this list is Becoming by R.L. Naquin. This isn't a strict fairy tale retelling. This falls more into mythology, but I didn't have any other books that were kind of fall mythology. And this goes with Greek mythology. 
And this is actually a short story following Patrice and how she finds out that she is of Gorgon descent. And then coming to terms with what that's going to mean for her future and what she can do. And it was nice to see someone who was actually excited to have this history come upon them when they didn't know about it. I would put this more of like a paranormal urban fantasy, but because it has the Gorgon and the mythology, I also felt it fit in with the fairy tale retellings. So if you like mythology, if you like Greek mythology, this is a fun short story to read, as well as in going into her further works. And I, for one, would not have been thrilled as a teenager to have my hair turn into snakes. Just saying. And so I feel like that is a good transition into the next category, which is urban fantasy. Urban fantasy is anything that is set in a city or a city-like setting. First one I have up for this category is Midnight for Charlie Bone by Jenny Nemo. Now this has been accused of being a Harry Potter ripoff, but beyond having a boy with magical powers and there is a magical school he goes to, there's not much more in common. And let's be honest, the, the magical school, witches, wizards thing is not a, was not a new concept when Harry Potter came out. I feel like this series has not received enough love because of that. This story follows Charlie Bone, who is living with his mother, his maternal grandmother, and his paternal grandmother. And his maternal grandmother and mother both work full time, but they're not making enough money to make ends meet. And so the paternal grandmother has agreed to help them with things that they need and living but also she wants access to Charlie. In Charlie's mind, his paternal grandmother is evil, and the way she treats him, you can't really argue with that. So in this series, there are, mag there are families that have been descended from an African king who came to Wales. He had 12 children, and their descendants sometimes have magical powers and sometimes do not. It ends up, Charlie has a magical power, and when that is discovered, he is sent to the family school that everyone in his family has been goes to. And in the school, they don't just have people with magical powers. The group he's placed in, all, the, all those kids do have magical powers, but they also work with kids who are prodigies in art, theater, and music. So there, there are kids in the school who do not have magical powers. And then this is a boarding school, so they are, the kids are there throughout the whole week, and then on the weekends they go home to their families. So the school is set in their city, but they have that separation just during the week. Again, this is a fun story, and I think that this series needs more love. So speaking of Harry Potter, this is another good series for people who are entering fantasy, because you have that mix of real world and then going away to a magical school, and are seeing a secret society that happens alongside what people without magic have. I think that this series is extremely popular and so I don't need to go into too much more information about it. I do want to say that the author is very problematic. So if you're somebody who you like to follow your creators, I would suggest look at what she's saying, see how you feel about it before repicking up this series. So kind of along that same vein where people have powers and they're people without powers, I would then suggest you read Akata Witch by Nanetti Okorafor, which has been also compared to Harry Potter erroneously. Uh, this is an African-based fantasy and it follows a young albino girl who finds out that she has magical powers and they are connected to her family history from her mother's side where they don't talk about it very much and she ends up meeting other people who also have powers and they and her group ends up being four kids who are all mentored and taught together as a cohort at the same time she's starting to gain more independence in her city it's a coming of age story not only of growing up but also of growing into power that you didn't realize you had. All right. So my last for the urban fantasy list is The Warrior Heir by Cinda Williams Chima. So this is more set in our contemporary society, except there are sorcerers, warriors, dragons, a variety of magical folk. 
and our main character, I think his name is Jack. It's been a while since I've read this book. It becomes discovered that he is one of these magical folk. And at this point in time, or when his story begins, family, he's, he's found to be a warrior type and warriors are taken to battle to the death against other houses, warriors. And he's not really cool into this. He doesn't, you know, this isn't what he wants to do. It's not the life he's grown up with. He meets another fellow warrior who's actually his opponent named Ellen. And I'm going to leave it there. This is the first in the series. Following books follow different people and different perspectives. And I like, I like that in a series, getting to see inside he the heads of other characters. Something that Chima did really well, I think, in this series is there is a group gathering of magical folk in a place called Trinity, Ohio, where they live alongside people who don't have magic. And they're living normal lives, and it's nice to see that balance. So for my third subgenre category, I have historical fantasy. So these are fantasies set in a historical point of time with fantasy elements thrown in. And for the first one, I have The Haunting of Tram Car 015 by P. Jelly Clark. This is a novella by him, and it's set in 1920s Cairo. And the fantastical element is jinn are real, and they have returned to our Earth. So along with having magic come back into the world, a police force had to be created. And so this story is following two officers of that new police force that are trying to figure out the haunting behind this tram car. So in the next book I have is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. And this is set in London um, around the time of like Jack the Ripper, so late 1800s. The setting is historical, but all the characters are fictional. It's based off of all the horror, like the gothic horror genre. The main character is Mary Jekyll. Her father was Dr. Jekyll. And she finds the daughters of all these other gothic horror villains. And they are trying to solve a case. And they meet and ask you know, Sherlock Holmes to help them. And then Watson agree. But the primary people who are doing the investigating are these women. And it was a lot of fun. So the fourth genre I have is portal fantasies. This is where you open a door and you walk into another world sort of setup. So the most famous of this is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I don't think I need to go into too much detail. This is a story that has been made into countless screen adaptations. I'm sure you've seen the movies. And this book follows four children, Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, who are sent away from London during the Blitz to be safe. And they go stay with a gentleman out in the country and in his house while playing hide and seek. Lucy, the youngest, finds a wardrobe. And when she hides in the wardrobe, she finds that it is a portal to a world called Narnia. Another good portal fantasy is Castle in the Attic by Elizabeth Winthrop. This is a duology, and this follows William, who has had a nanny growing up, and she's now declared it is time for him to no longer have a nanny. He's going into middle school. Her and his parents want him to be able to develop a better relationship with his parents and also kids in his own age. They want him to learn how to be more independent. He's not ready for her to do that. As she's preparing to leave she gives him a castle that her and her brother played with when they were kids and a knight that they had as well and he ends up waking up this toy knight finding out there's more to the story and through the aid of the toy knight ends up kidnapping his nanny to try to keep her in the end he he does let her go he has to grow up and realize he can live without her but it is a fun portal fantasy story and then the last one I have for this category is Jed in the Junkyard War by Stephen Bowles. This was a fun one for me. It was not what I was expecting when I picked it up to read it. But this follows Jed, who one day comes home and his parents are missing. He finds a note from them. It makes absolutely no sense. And he finds the portal behind his dishwasher and goes through to go look for his missing parents. 
So the last fa subgenre fantasy category I have is sword and sorcery. And so this is a mix of medieval times where people fighting with swords and also books that have magic. First one for this category I have is Hell's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This has been made into a movie by Studio Ghibli. This follows Sophie who, upon her father's death, her stepmother realizes that she can't care for the three girls and she decides to parcel them out in the best way so then they can have a good future. And because Sophie's the eldest, it's decided that she will apprentice to her stepmother to run the hat shop that was her father's. And in the course of doing this, Sophie's not the happiest about it, but she believes it's her lot in life because she is the oldest of three daughters. One day, the Wicked Witch of the West comes in and transforms her into an old woman. And with that, she decides to go away, start her own journey. At the same time, in the hills above her town, there is a moving castle, and it is owned by the wizard Howl, who is known for eating the hearts of beautiful young women. And Sophie realizes that eh, she's no longer a young woman. She never thought she was beautiful. She's going to go annoy the wizard. Next I have is The Seventh Princess by Nick Sullivan. This is about a girl named Jennifer who has an assignment to do for school where she needs to write about a dream, except she doesn't dream. So she's really stressed out about this. And then on the way to school one day in the bus, the day of that assignment is due, she's taken to another world. And in this world, she is told that she's the adopted princess Miranda and is being groomed to become the next queen, and she doesn't understand everything that is going on. Next is Alana, The First Adventure by Tamara Pierce. She is one of my favorite authors. This series follows Alana, who is a twin. Her, she has a twin brother, and at the age that starts off, they're 10, and as long as their hair is the same length, they look identical. Their dad has just declared that her brother Tom has to go to the capital to become a knight, and she has to go to a convent to become a young lady. And neither of them want that future. Alana wants to be the knight, and Tom wants to be a sorcerer. So they switch places, because the convent trains little boys before they are then sent to the priesthood to learn more magic. So I think this book does a great job addressing how girls grow into women, how their bodies change, what that means, for them and I just love the grit and determination that Alana shows in this series. And this is a series that I read at least once a year. So next for this list I have Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. In this story we follow, I think her name is Mary, oh it's been a while since I read it, um, but this is in a, set in a medieval society where a prophecy foretells what section of the country the prince's queen will be, or the new king's queen will come from, his, where the bride is going to be coming from. When the story starts, the section is from a rock quarry that is on the very edge of the kingdom most people don't pay much attention to. So the prince just can't go meet the girls right away. They have to be prepared, and thus a princess academy is born. Since none of these girls are noble, they're all daughters of working when men and women in this quarry. Officials from the capital come and take all the girls who are younger than the princess age within a certain margin to be taught. This kind of has a double fold because as the girls are gaining an education, they are also realizing how they thought things worked outside of the quarry isn't really how it is. And they're able to improve the lives of their own families through this exchange as well. And there is a little bit of magic in this. I don't want to spoil it. It's a very cute read. All right, so next on my list, I have Fire. This is the companion novel to Graceling, but I like Fire better. And you don't have to read Graceling to enjoy Fire. There is a common element between the two. And so whichever one you read, it's going to spoil you for the other one. But Fire is actually my favorite because I really like the character who is named Fire, and she is a monster, according to her society, with the power of enchantment and beguilement, and 
she does not like this. Her father, who also has the same power, was very evil. And she does not want to follow down the path that he led. So this is a story of fire trying to come from out from underneath her father's legacy while trying to figure out what she wants. And then the last but definitely not least on this list is The Dragon with the Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. This is a gorgeous story talking about a young dragon who wants to prove how fierce she is and that she can go out and get her kill her own humans leaves her family's home even though she's not supposed to meets a human who is cooking this beguiling smell and when she demands that he give her this item he gives her the hot chocolate and what she didn't realize is he was a food mage and he cast a spell for the hot chocolate that turned her turns her into a human girl knowing that she can't go back to her home looking like a human girl and that her family will probably kill her because now that she's a human girl since she still smells like herself as a dragon she decides to go towards the town that's not too far away and learn more about how to make this beguiling chocolate so this is her journey to become a chocolatier it's a gorgeous story so please go pick it up pick up all these books, especially if you're interested in starting fantasy. I hope that this gave you some good ideas. And if you're already a fantasy reader like me, please let me know down below if there are other beginner fantasies that you think people should know. Thank you and have a good day.